Welcome to the Hillsborian Historian. My name is Rex. Join me as I take a look at three terrifying terrier tales in what I like to call the Hillsborough High School Haunted Halloween Spooktacular. I really got to work on a shorter title next time. An old custodian once told me that a school as old as HHS has to have ghosts. And there are definitely mysterious tales. But are any true? Let's do a little bit of research and try to find out. The realms of history and mystery often intersect, and you may have heard some version of some of these tales. The Wolf Kid. That's not even scary, and he looks like my old chemistry lab partner. This one's much better, a tale of lost love called Prom Date. Like most love stories, this one starts with a seating chart. The era is the 1970s. A girl transfers to HHS from across town. She has a big bow in her hair and vintage 50s clothes. But it wasn't Spirit Week. And she was wearing a ring that belonged to her grandmother. She is assigned to sit next to a popular guy, and they soon hit it off. He asks her out to prom, which was that weekend. And she said yes. They did dance all night, but she didn't like this music until they played old school rock and roll. And then her dance moves became ancient. The twist, the bunny hop, the jive. They walked outside and spoke of love and life and the future. And at midnight, they shared a passionate kiss. She blushed and his heart beat fast with the combination of love and lust. She asked to excuse herself as she wanted to powder her nose, and he waited outside. He had never felt this way before. He was passionately in love. Even on the strangest of nights, love is a powerful force. The young man waited as long as he could, and then he went inside to look for his prom date. He did ask around, but nobody recalled seeing his prom date. Other girls guaranteed him that no one was in the girls' restroom. He looked around the dance floor frantically, trying to find any clue of where this girl could have gone. Naturally, the young man was upset, and he surveyed the dance floor one last time for his lost love. Then, after what seemed like an eternity, the young man decided to go and wait outside. The young man waited and waited. He could hear the music and his friends having so much fun. And he resolved that if his prom date did not return, he would go to her house tomorrow and find out what had happened. And of course, the prom ended, and she never did return. The next day, he walked to his prom date's home and knocked on the door. An old lady wearing the same ring as his prom date opened it. He asked for his prom date by name, but the old lady simply told him that 20 years earlier, her granddaughter had disappeared on prom night, never to be seen again. Well, it wouldn't be the first time somebody was ghosted on prom night. I don't think this story has the ring of truth and it dances around with the facts. So I'm labeling it as false. What else do we have? My teacher is a witch. So were a couple of mine. Here's one that will leave you spinning with fear. Locker 666. In the mid-1990s, an IB student was told that her locker was under repair. She was assigned a new locker on the end of the third floor. Locker 666. 
Her friends told her that it was cursed by a student who was booted off the honor roll. The IB student made it clear that she had no time for such nonsense. The next day, the students went to retrieve an assignment from the locker, but all she found was old notebooks and an old report card from decades ago. She received an F for that assignment, and when she went to look for the copy of Macbeth that she left in the locker, the next day, all she found was the Odyssey of Homer. She searched all through the locker, but could not find her copy of Macbeth, even though she knew that she had left it there. As a result, she was late for class. These sort of incidents continued, and the tardies piled up, eventually landing her in in-school suspension. Even worse, her GPA plummeted, and soon she had to tell her parents that she was no longer on the high honor roll. She tried to explain to her parents what was going on, but they would not believe her, and she was told she could no longer date. This led to the boyfriend breaking up with her. The next time she went to Locker 666, it had simply disappeared. While this may seem strange, it was actually a blessing in disguise. The girl got new books, carried them around in a book bag, and regained her position on the high honor roll. She got her old Locker back, and she got her old boyfriend back too. Then one day, her and her friends were walking down the hallway and saw Locker 666. The IB student cursed the locker and all it had done to her. But her friends realized that they were correct. Locker 666 was indeed cursed by a girl who had fallen off the honor roll. I think this Locker story has a combination that just doesn't add up, and I'm labeling it false. The vampire on the roof. Where else is he gonna be? Our final tale comes straight from the horse's mouth and is called School Spirit. This tale does have some historical sources to back it up. In 1895, Tampa was little more than a one-horse town. A man called L.G. Cohn was considered one of the best liverymen in the South, and he ran the Tampa Livery Stable, located at Madison Street and Florida Avenue. Mr. Cohn acquired a horse named Spirit, called so because of its fiery energy. Due to its strength and speed, the horse was sold to the fire department. However, the horse refused to pull the fire engine, leaving many in peril. The fire chief was confused as to why Spirit would pull the engine when there was no fire, but watched as buildings burned. This led to fisticuffs between the fire department and Mr. Cohn. Spirit was replaced as a fire horse, and soon Mr. Cohn was leasing Spirit out. Spirit next destroyed a buggy while in Sefner. The beast continued to grow increasingly more difficult to control. On one occasion, a man was trimming Spirit's hooves when Spirit kicked him in the head. Thankfully, the man was not seriously injured. In October, Mr. Cohn began a new undertaking business. The newspaper accounts tell us that Mr. Cohn guaranteed it would be ready just after Halloween and that it would be a howling success. Satisfaction was always guaranteed. And indeed, no body ever complained. Now, strangely, spirit, which seemed to have no control in many other endeavors, had a calm and somber trot when used as a funerary horse. Before we put the cart before the horse, you may wonder what all this has to do with HHS. The Tampa Livery Stable was located in a two-story brick building, and as the population of Tampa grew, Hillsborough High School eventually moved into a temporary quarters on the second floor of this same building. Spirit soon took to these high school students and the big red apples they would feed him. Despite the horse beginning to calm down a bit, at the next auction, nobody would buy Spirit due to his fiery reputation. 
Soon after this incident, there was a petition to City Council for Tampa Livery Stable to be moved due to the strange noises coming from it. Nonetheless, Mr. Cohn noted that Spirit was much calmer. This newfound calmness was attributed to the students of Hillsborough High School feeding him those big red apples. Spirit was soon sold to Colonel John Miller. However, he would often meander back to the livery stable in search of big red apples. Colonel Miller and Mr. Weir often argued about who had the fastest horse. So they had a race. Mr. Weir drove his own horse while Spirit was driven by a man named R.L. Gordon. At one point, Spirit was in the lead, but then he broke badly and lost the race. Many considered Spirit to be the faster horse, but he had to be kept under control. A second race was held at 3 o'clock, and Apocrypha tells us that Spirit won that race. However, after this wild ride, Mr. Gordon stated that he would not go near Spirit ever again. At any rate, Spirit would often get free and wander in search of the high school students wherever they might be. He followed them from location to location, from downtown to Tampa Heights to Seminole Heights and the Big Red. Here, students did feed him Big Red apples until one day he disappeared. However, on moonlit Halloween nights, it is stated that Spirit will appear in search of students who will feed him once more. Okay, no need to beat a dead horse. I'm calling this one false. How is a ghost horse going to eat an apple anyhow? All right, my terriers. I think this undertaking is complete. I hope you enjoyed these spooky tales. Be sure to take care of yourselves out there. And till next time, please subscribe to my channel to keep up with all of my HHS videos. And as always, go Big Red. Ooh.